Good day, our viewers at home. This is another episode on this same topic. We are trying to solve numerous questions that relates to this uh, broad topic called the rotational dynamics of rigid bodies. Now, what makes it somehow broad is that we are not only considering the dynamics, we have also looked at what? The kinematics of rotation. So we are combining two topics at the same time, dynamics of rotation and what? The kinematic, kinematics of what? Rotation. So here we have a question that will actually show us, because in the, in the first lecture we had with you, I can remember I told you that a rigid body is a body that cannot be bent into what? Any different shape or what? Or form. And I also told you that a rigid body can undergo both what? Both translational motion and what? And rotational what? Motion. We will have an example of a body that can undergo both translational motion and what? Rotational motion at the same time. So when a body undergoes these two types of, these two type of motion at the same time, and we are required to calculate this, the velocity, or the, the energy, the energy of that particular what? Material, or that particular object. How can the en energy be found? Remember, if the body is undergoing linear motion, the kinetic energy is given as half mv squared. But if the body is undergoing what? Rotational motion. The kinetic energy for rotation is given as half i w squared. Half i what? W what? Squared. So in this case, when the body is now undergoing both translational motion and what? Rotational motion. How can we now be able to find the total energy of this uh, object? That is what this question we have now in this episode tends to address. Now in this question, we are given something like, okay, example of a body like under, a bo example of a body that can undergo both translational motion and what? And rotational motion is like a wheel, your wheels. As your wheel moves, it moves along a straight path and the wheel is also what? Rotating. So we also have a question here. The question reads that a sphere, a sphere of mass, the mass is given as what? as 0 0.5 kg and a diameter, let me put down the parameters given, solution, we are given that the mass of the sphere is what, 0 0.5 kg and what again do I have? The diameter D is given as 1 what, 1 meter. So the sphere of mass this and diameter this rolls without what, without slipping. It rolls without what, slipping. So, as you mean I have this sphere like this, this is a sphere, okay? And this is my floor, this is the floor. This is the floor. This is the floor or the ground level. This is the floor, okay? This sphere has a diameter of what? It has a diameter of one meter, one M. And it has a mass of what? 0 0.5 what? kg. Then this sphere rolled along this axis, the X axis. Maybe it came to this new position. It came to this new what? Position. For this object to roll from here to here means that it must roll with a particular speed or a particular velocity. So as it is rolling, it is undergoing what? Rotational what? Motion. And in the same vein, for it to move linearly from this posi position to this position, for it to cover this linear displacement, it means that what? It is also undergoing translational what? Motion. So therefore, we, have, we want to calculate, if you want to calculate the total energy of this uh, sphere, we must first and foremost consider the energy required to complete this uh, displacement, to cover this linear displacement, and the energy required to what? For the body to what? To be undergoing what? Rotation. So therefore, the total energy Total what? Energy. Total energy of this sphere will be equal to what? The kinetic energy, kinetic energy for what? For translation. Used for what? Translational motion. Plus the kinetic energy for what? For rotation. That now means that our total kinetic energy will be equal to 
Who can tell me what is the formula for the kinetic energy for, for translation? It is given as half mv squared plus what is the kinetic energy for rotation? It is given as half i w squared. Are you there? Yes. So, but if you look at this question here, we are only giving, we are giving the constant velocity. The constant what? Velocity, that is our V. The constant V sub T, that is the tangential velocity. The velocity, or the speed of rotation was given as what? As 5 meter per second. Please, don't confuse yourself. This speed given here, the speed given here is not what? Is not actually the angular velocity. It is not the angular velocity. It is the what? The tangential velocity. Because the real speed, the real speed used for rotation, the real speed of a rotating body is the tangential velocity. The angular velocity there is just an equivalence. Equivalence of what? Of linear velocity in the world of what? Rotation. So therefore, we want to calculate the total kinetic what? energy. So what it means is that for me to find the total kinetic energy, I must know the kinetic energy for translation and the what? And the energy for what? For rotation. So I have to find these things one after the other and then, and then do what? And then carry out my calculation. So this will be done very easy. It will be done in an easy what? way. Now, how can this be done? Yes. Total kinetic energy, total kinetic energy will be equal to half m v squared plus half m, sorry, sorry, half what? i w squared, as I have here. Please remember, there is a relationship between angular velocity and what? And linear velocity. There is a relationship between the angular what? Velocity and the what? And the, and the constant uh, linear velocity of a rotating body. We give it to you in the first lecture we had here. Where we, whereby we say that what? That the tangential velocity v sub t, that is the constant velocity of a rotating body, is equal to what? W r. W what? R. That is omega r. We may use that word omega for it or whatever. Whatever symbol, the name you are using to represent symbols does not actually count. What counts is that you are able to remember the meaning of those uh, things. So this is a uh, v sub t. That is the velocity. The constant velocity is always equals to the angular velocity times what? Times the radius of what? Of the object in question. So I can replace this my w here by my, my w. So this now means making w the subject of the formula. It now means my w will be equals to v over what? Over r. So this now implies that our total kinetic energy, total kinetic energy will be equals to half mv squared plus half i, instead of writing w, now write v over what? Over, over what? Over r. Everything what? Squared. Everything what? Squared. Now in the same vein, we also have to make some translations because in this question here, we are not giving the value of the inertia. We are not giving the value of the word inertia. We are not giving the value for the word for the inertia. So we have to look for the inertia of this uh, object. Now for a sphere, who can tell me the formula for the inertia? I told you every object has its own formula for the word inertia. So if you want to find the inertia of a sphere, for a sphere, please take note. Take note of this. The inertia of a sphere through the center of what? Gravity. Is always given as what? Is given as a two fifths. Two fifths. That is two over five m r what? M r squared. Two fifths. Two over five m r what? M r squared. So therefore, so whenever you are given a sphere and you are asked to find the moment of inertia of the sphere through the center of gravity, it has the formula as what? Two over five m r what? Squared. We have given the, the formula for the moment of inertia of a of a disk as half m r squared. For a ring, we give it as what? As m r squared. Then for a rod, a rod of length L, we give the formula as what? As m l squared over what? Over 12. So using this now, 
for the moment of inertial, putting into this formula, it therefore means that our required kinetic energy will now be equal to half mv squared plus half, instead of writing i, we can now write what? We can now write 2 over 5 m r squared times, this will now give us v squared over what? r what? Squared. Okay, please, let me use big r here to replace this. So that this arrow square can cancel this arrow square. Then, if you now proceed with the problem, when you proceed with the problem, you can now see that we can now find this energy we are looking for. The energy we are looking for equals to half mv squared plus two cancels to this now becomes one over five mv what square. One over five mv what square. So to do the mathematics and make it simpler, k will not be equal. When you add this half and this one over five, what will you get? What will you get? Think that is what. Let me. That is a. Uh, that is one over what two plus one over five. That will give us seven over ten. Okay. It becomes 7 over 10 mv what? Squared. Because what I just told you, this thing and these two, these two terms are similar. They are the same. So I just have to add the constants here and then that is it. So now, remember, we are, we are giving the mass from the question as 0 0.5 kg and we are giving our v as what? What was the velocity given? Okay, we have 5 meter per second. So therefore, the required kinetic energy of that particular sphere will be 7 upon 10 by the mass 0 0.5 by what? 5 what? Squared. So if you resolve this properly well, our kinetic energy will be equal to what? What do I have when I resolve it? Okay, this might be, let me just check it properly well. This is 7 upon what? Upon 10 by 0 0.5 by what? By 5 squared. Answer. Okay, the answer becomes... 335, okay, let me just, this is 8 point what? 8.75. What is the unit of energy? Energy is measured in what? In joules. Energy is measured in joules. So, we are done with this question. So, this is a very, let me just summarize what we have just done. We have said that it is possible for a rigid body to undergo both what? Both translational motion and what? And rotational motion. In such case, it is possible for us to find the energy of that particular what, body. To find the energy of the body, what do we do? We have to add the energy for translation and the what, and the energy for what, rotation. And the energy for translation is given as half mv squared. Whereby the energy for what, rotation is given as what, is given as half i w what, i w squared. And from there, we can now we are able to solve this uh, particular problem with the parameters given to us. We observed again that for a sphere, the moment of inertial of a sphere is normally given as 2 upon 5, that is through the center of gravity. Remember, there are so many ways you can find moment of inertia. When somebody asks you to find the moment of inertia, the first thing you ask the person is, about what point or about what axis do you want me to find the word moment of inertia? If the axis is not given to you, then just Take it that the person is not really serious about the question. So if the person is serious about the question, when you are, when you are asked to find the inertia, moment of inertia, so the next thing you ask the person is, if you want me to find the moment of inertia of this object, then about what point do you want the inertia to be found? Is it through the center of gravity or through any other points made on the particular word object? So if we are considering the inertia of a sphere, about the center of gravity. The inertial is normally given as 2 upon 5 m r what squared. That is what we used to solve this uh, question. But remember, this question is an exercise picked from your textbooks for the university uh, tertiary physics, sorry, the university uh, uh, physics uh, problems in the aspect of this uh, topic called rotational world dynamics. So I believe that we have done enough uh, 
solving of questions in this uh, particular aspect of this topic. So see you next time in the next episode. Thank you and uh, God bless you as you revise your books.